Welcome back to Research Graduate. Today we are going to talk about research bias. So, without any further delay, let us head straight to the topic. Research bias results from any deviation from the truth, causing distorted results and wrong conclusions. Bias can occur at any phase of your research, including during data collection, data analysis, interpretation, or publication. Research bias can occur in both qualitative and quantitative research. Understanding research bias is important for several reasons. One bias exists in all research, across research designs, and is difficult to eliminate. Two bias can occur at any stage of the research process. Three bias impacts the validity and reliability of your findings, leading to misinterpretation of data. It is almost impossible to conduct a study without some degree of research bias. It's crucial for you to be aware of the potential types of bias, so you can minimize them. Actor, observer bias. Actor, observer bias occurs when you attribute the behavior of others to internal factors, like skill, or personality, but attribute your own behavior to external or situational factors. In other words, when you are the actor in a situation, you are more likely to link events to external factors, such as your surroundings or environment. However, when you are observing the behavior of others, you are more likely to associate behavior with their personality, nature, or temperament. Confirmation bias Confirmation bias is the tendency to seek out information in a way that supports our existing beliefs while also rejecting any information that contradicts those beliefs. Confirmation bias is often unintentional but still results in skewed results and poor decision making. Information bias Information bias, also called measurement bias, arises when key study variables are inaccurately measured or classified. Information bias occurs during the data collection step and is common in research studies that involve self-reporting and retrospective data collection. It can also result from poor interviewing techniques or differing levels of recall from participants. The main types of information bias are, recall bias, observer bias, performance bias, regression to the mean, RTM, interviewer bias, Interviewer bias stems from the person conducting the research study. It can result from the way they ask questions or react to responses, but also from any aspect of their identity, such as their sex, ethnicity, social class, or perceived attractiveness. Interviewer bias distorts responses, especially when the characteristics relate in some way to the research topic. Interviewer bias can also affect the interviewer's ability to establish rapport with the interviewees, causing them to feel less comfortable giving their honest opinions about sensitive or personal topics. Publication bias Publication bias occurs when the decision to publish research findings is based on their nature or the direction of their results. Studies reporting results that are perceived as positive, statistically significant, or favoring the study hypotheses are more likely to be published due to publication bias. Publication bias is related to data dredging, also called p-hacking, where statistical tests on a set of data are run until something statistically significant happens. As academic journals tend to prefer publishing statistically significant results, this can pressure researchers to only submit statistically significant results. P-hacking can also involve excluding participants or stopping data collection once a p-value of 0.05 is reached. However, this leads to false positive results and an over-representation of positive results in published academic literature. Researcher Bias Researcher bias occurs when the researcher's beliefs or expectations influence the research design or data collection process. Researcher bias can be deliberate, such as claiming that an intervention worked even if it didn't, or unconscious, such as letting personal feelings, stereotypes, or assumptions influence research questions. The unconscious form of researcher bias is associated with the Pygmalion, or Rosenthal, effect, where the researcher's high expectations, example that patients assigned to a treatment group will succeed, lead to better performance and better outcomes. Response bias 
Response bias is a general term used to describe a number of different situations where respondents tend to provide inaccurate or false answers to self-report questions, such as those asked on surveys or in structured interviews. This happens because when people are asked a question, example during an interview, they integrate multiple sources of information to generate their responses. Because of that, any aspect of a research study may potentially bias a respondent. Examples include the phrasing of questions in surveys, how participants perceive the researcher, or the desire of the participant to please the researcher and to provide socially desirable responses. Response bias also occurs in experimental medical research. When outcomes are based on patients' reports, a placebo effect can occur. Here, patients report an improvement despite having received a placebo, not an active medical treatment. Common types of response bias are, acquiescence bias demand characteristics social desirability bias courtesy bias question order bias extreme responding selection bias. Selection bias is a general term describing situations where bias is introduced into the research from factors affecting the study population. Common types of selection bias are, sampling or ascertainment bias attrition bias volunteer or self-selection bias survivorship bias non-response bias under coverage bias how to avoid bias in research. While very difficult to eliminate entirely, research bias can be mitigated through proper study design and implementation. Here are some tips to keep in mind as you get started. Clearly explain in your methodology section how your research design will help you meet the research objectives and why this is the most appropriate research design. In quantitative studies, make sure that you use probability sampling to select the participants. If you're running an experiment, make sure you use random assignment to assign your control and treatment groups. Account for participants who withdraw or are lost to follow up during the study. If they are withdrawing for a particular reason, it could bias your results. This applies especially to longer term or longitudinal studies. Use triangulation to enhance the validity and credibility of your findings. Phrase your survey or interview questions in a neutral, non judgmental tone. Be very careful that your questions do not steer your participants in any particular direction. Consider using a reflexive journal. Here, you can log the details of each interview, paying special attention to any influence you may have had on participants. You can include these in your final analysis. Hope you find this video insightful and knowledgeable to help you in writing your research papers without plagiarism. Anytime you feel like you are not able to do it on your own call us right away and we will do that for you we can help you with plagiarism check for the papers you write. Stay tuned to Research Graduate to get more such videos till then happy research also if you have any of the PhD and Masters related service requirements visit our website www.researchgraduate.com check out the description for more contact details.